Today, we will peer deep inside the heart of the HTTP server that runs much of the internet. We're going to look at the source code for Nginx, and we're going to spend only 30 minutes doing so. As I've explained on some of my other videos, I'm not taking requests right now. Requests are paused. Uh, if you want to make a suggestion for a future video, you can join the Discord. The link is below. And you can add your suggestion to the spreadsheet. I'm not uh, promising to get to any of those, but that will serve as the brainstorming inspiration for, um, for the user requested videos in the new regime, which happens once I finish my current backlog. And uh, I think all of this stuff is going to be in source. So we'll go to nginx slash source, and we see core, event, HTTP, mail, misc, OS, and stream. The request was that I look into HTTP so that um, event is going to be presumably some sort of event system, maybe an event loop for handling requests. But my mandate right now is to, to look into HTTP, and so that's where I will be. So ngx, I'm guessing is just the, the prefix that means nginx. And what do we have? Well, we have a parser. Do we have a header for the parser? Maybe the headers are in another folder, although they don't seem to be because we have several headers here. Just not everything has a header. We have a core module. I don't know really if module is necessary. We're not going to look at file cache. I really want to focus on the on the protocol if I can. This is this is presumably Hoffman encoding and decoding. We open the parser. Um, what else do we have? Uh, maybe request and request.c, request body. Script, perhaps. Upstream, I'm not sure if that's interesting. Variables, I'm not sure if that's interesting. And maybe that maybe that's enough for us. So HTTP parse. We have a usual vector here. I don't know what this is. This is some hex uh, codes. And uh, I don't know why I keep disconnecting. But um, let me check one thing. Yeah, okay, good. Um, I'm not sure what these are. One 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 zero one 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 and more similar. And some of these are the same. We have a lot of OX and then a bunch of Fs. We have this str three comp, which takes M, C one C oh, C zero C one C two C three, and we're checking if M uh, cast is a UN32 is equal to uh, this C3 shifted by, by 24 or a C2 shifted by 16, et cetera, et cetera. And this, I guess, only happens if we have little endian and have non aligned. So this is somehow. Maybe, um, I forget what the uh, endianness of the network is. Endianness is primarily expressed as big endian or little endian. Blah, 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 and network, blah, blah, the term, blah, 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 blah. So which one is the internet? Big endianness is the dominant ordering in networking protocols, such as in the Internet Protocol Suite, where it is referred to as network order. So, okay, so um, big endian is network order, and conversely, little endianness is the dominant ordering for processor architectures and their associated memory. Okay, so I think this is maybe converting between big endian and uh, and little endian, although why? It's called comp. I'm not sure, uh, but we probably will see these used somewhere. I don't know why stir eight, stir nine. 
And then if we're down here, then I guess we don't have these two things. We don't have little Indian and non-aligned. In which case, these comparisons look a lot more straightforward. We're checking if M0 is equal to C0 and M1 is equal to C1 and M2 is equal to C2. Okay, so we are checking, um, we have M, which is like a list that we can index into. And we're checking if it's entries or C1s, uh, sorry, C0, C1, C2, and C3. And up here, we're like compensating for the endianness and in, uh, I guess doing the same check. And we're oring these together because we are uh, shifting the bits over. Okay. Then we have a, uh, a comment here. GCC, ICC, MSVC, and others compile these switches as a jump table. So you've got this function, ngx HTTP parse request line. You give it an HTTP request, or rather a pointer to one, and an, Engin an nginx buffer. And it's going to return you an int, an nginx int, but I assume it's re really just an int. So we have these u cars, which I guess are unsigned cars, c, ch, P and M. I don't know what these are going to be, but we have some enum. We're def looks like we're defining this enum in the in the function. So SW start, SW method, SW schema, switch, I guess. Spaces before URI, URI, HTTP 09. I don't know what this stuff is. Um, that's the state. And we'll set state equal to our state, the state from the request. So I guess this is coming in as part of the HTTP request. Uh, let's look up the HTTP state. Is it the same as XML HTTP request? Probably not. Let's look up the HTTP header. The standard request fields are these, accept, accept encoding, cache control, content length, cookie, expect, post. I don't know if there's a state. I don't think there is. So, well, 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 there's this. There's the cookie, there's cookie state, but I'm not sure. I don't know what HTTP 09 is, for example. What is an HTTP 0.9 request? Is a one-line protocol. Its main points are initial version of HTTP. Okay, so this is, I guess, the initial version. Request nature, single line, method plus path, or requested document. Only supports get, response type is hypertext only, connection nature terminated immediately after the response, and no HTTP headers. Uh, where's the, um, the spec, not the spec. Is this 1992? All right. Whatever it is, it's the, I think it's the oldest HTTP spec. All right. So that's, whoa, 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 whoa. That's what that is, I guess. These are different things that are uh, are in are in the request. I don't know where request that state gets set, but it's set, it's set somewhere. And then we iterate over p as being used as a as like an index or a pointer. Uh, we get the b position as b the body. That's the buffer. We're going to loop over the buffer. Um, and while p is the the index is less than the we're not well, while we're not at the end of the buffer. We're going to set ch to p. So maybe cs is like a, a cursor, or maybe it's a character. Then we're going to switch on the state. And um, 
we get this comment here, HTTP methods get head post. Um, if we're at SW start, we'll set the request start to P. And if the character is uh, essentially a new line that we're going to break. SW something word. I'm not really sure what SW is yet. Um, if the character is between, uh, these comparisons go the opposite way. Okay. So I think this is not a capital letter and it's not, um, an underscore, not a dash. Then it's, it's an invalid method. Otherwise we said state to the SW method. So I guess we were at start and now the new state will be method. We're going to break. I kind of want to, I kind of want to know what the, um, the state is. So let's see if we can look in the tags here. In fact, this is such a small number of files that maybe we'll just stick to Emacs. Stop that. We don't want HTTP on um, Nginx. Okay, so the, um, the request has I guess a signature, which is HTTP. It's associated with some connection. It's got, I guess, a context, a main conf, a serve conf, a loc conf. I don't know what those confs are. A handler pointer, which is a, a, a pointer to a read event handler, a pointer to a write event handler, a cache if we're using an HTTP cache, um, an upstream some array of upstream states, a pool, a buffer called header in. So, so header input and in, in output buffer is a request body, lingering time, start seconds and milliseconds, a method, an HTTP version, a request line, URI, args, extend, like extension, I'm not sure, unparsed URI, method name, HTTP protocol, schema, an out chain, a uh, pointer to the main uh, main request, I guess for, if we are part of a chain, a parent, postponed, post sub request, posted requests, a phase handler, content handler, access code, some variables, and some PCRE should be regular expressions and captures. So these are captures for regular expressions, uh, limit rate and limit rate after. So this is a probably, uh, like TCP limiting, limiting, uh, rate limiting header size, request length, error status, HTTP, HTTP collection stream V3 parse. Maybe this, like a, the parser changes between versions. A log handler cleanup count uh, sub requests blocked AIO, I guess asynchronous IO, HTTP state, complex URI, quoted URI, etc. Lots of stuff. Do we want, um, so yeah, we're well. So this like SW start stuff is there's some gRPC model module. We have a V3 parse. And this is this name is is going everywhere. Mail parse nginx files. So I don't I I, don't, I still don't know really when the uh, uh when the state is set on the request, but 
it's set at some point. At any rate, at the end of, if we're at the end of SW start, then we set SW method and that's the next thing. And so we look at if the character is the, um, the, the space character. And if the next, I guess P minus one, if the, if the previous, um, thing that the, we were pointing at is the method end. No, no, we set the method end to P minus one, because I guess we're at a space so that, uh, the thing that came before us was the end of the word. We set M to be the request start. And we switch on P minus M. So that should be the request is the difference between the start and the end essentially. And if it's three, it's really the, the distance between them, I guess. Then we check if it's a get request or a put request. Those are the three letter requests. Otherwise it might be four. We look in the, um, the second, uh, the second letter. And if it's O, then we're either in post copy move or block. Otherwise it's head. And so why not look at the first letter? I guess this is a, it allows us to have fewer cases because so many share an O this is, we're kind of doing, um, tree branching. And if we had looked at the first letter, we would have to do, uh, one, two, three, four, five, if else blocks, whereas we only really have to do, well, it's the same amount, but I guess by looking at O, we cut down more quickly. And, um, it doesn't look like any of these, there's not like two H's or, or two C's or two M's or anything. All right. Um, and then what else? Case five MK column. I don't know what that is. And then, but also patch trace. What is MK column? Hello. Hello, Heidi. 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 The web dev mic column is some web dev thing. It looks like a new collection resource. Okay. I think we were in Emacs. All right. And then, so these are just the different, uh, different, uh, HTTP methods, delete, unlock, prop. Pro patch, prop patch, propose patch, maybe. Pro patch. Prop patch. I missed the P. Uh, it's also web dev related. Something about web dev. Go to the browser so it is so we don't get confused all right and then um if we're done here then we're also an invalid method but now we check to i guess this is like the no this is the same as before we're uh we're checking that we're out of the defined met, uh, method character space although it seems like what if we're not out of that space, then we just keep going. We're going to hit break. So I'm not sure. All right. Um, and then, uh, we are done here. So did we switch cases? So, um, we're setting the R method kind of depending on what, um, on, uh, what the name was. So for example, if we got put, We'll set the R method to ng, ngx HTTP put. And so that's essentially reifying the string into a, a type that's visible or, or can be seen by the compiler. So that's setting the type. Do we change the state? Yes. If we don't, um, if we don't error out here, 
we change this date to SW spaces before URI. So this is presumably going to just consume spaces until we get to the URI. And we're going to look to see if it's, we're in a slash. And if we are, we're going to go to the after slash and URI. And uh, we're going to set C to the ch we got org with x20, cast as a ucar, and check that it's between A and Z. And uh, set our schema start to P. I guess it's the start of the schema because we're not a slash. And we're going to break. And then we're going to switch on ch. If it's a space, we break. And by default, we're going to say parse invalid request. So, um, Okay, so this is an this is an if, and uh, I, I was confused for a second about why we weren't consuming the spaces first. It seemed like we were assuming that this was a a character, and really we're just cat we're just getting the C as an ASCII character, and then checking it's checking where it is if it's if we're starting a word with it. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so we did two state changes. One is we're after the slashes in the UI, URI, and one is that we're looking at the schema. And so this is just more parsing. This is like this is a pretty interesting parser that seems to be um, focused on efficiency. We've seen other parsers using like, uh, like parser combinators, for example, in Haskell. Um, this one seems to be focused on parsing quickly because it's Nginx and we're trying to get requ requests handled at high velocity. And it's this, we've got this state machine, and we're kind of moving through the state machine to, to, to determine where things are. Um, but I'm going to move along. And we have parse header line. This is presumably for parsing a header line. We have the enum here as before, as, but we have different states. We have start, name, space before value, et cetera. And um, the, the comment above the other enum said that this I think it was saying this inline enum gets converted to a jump table by the compilers. The last uh, null character is not needed because string is zero terminated. Okay. So this is some low case, lowercase thing. I don't really know what's going on. We see the um, ordinals zero to nine. We see the lowercase alphabet twice. But this is presumably some sort of lookup table that's gonna help us do fast stuff. And this is for parsing the header line. Let's see where lowercase is used. Okay, I think these these null characters are because maybe this is where this is like the whole ASCII table, and these are just where in in ASCII these things are. So lowercase. I forget, uh, I forget which one comes first, but one of these is. Uh, is the identity map between the lowercase letters in themselves, and the other is the map between the capital letters and the in their lowercase versions. And then we have some uh, a thing for parsing the um, the URIs, and we can parse a complex URI. I don't know what makes it complex. Maybe it has an embedded URI or something. And this is this is parsing. So let's look at some other stuff. Um, maybe request. So the request has headers, of course, and you've got these defined, these are, I guess these probably come from the standard, like, um, although not, uh, I'm not, I guess not because we had to parse the string to, to define them. So you have, uh, like post, get the method, the, the methods, copy, m call. And prop patch we saw were methods for web dev and so on. We have like a define for invalid header and so on and so forth. We use a special code for the plain HTTP requests that are sent to HTTP to sent to HTTPS port to distinguish it from a 4xx in an error page redirection. So this is like if you send um, plain HTTP to like to a HTTPS. Endpoint, you get an error, and I guess HD, I guess Nginx is keeping track of um, internally of like when that happens. The header struct, 
has a name, which is a string, an index string, an offset, which is an int, and a handler, I guess, to handle the the, hand, the header, I assume. We have an, a header out, which has a name and an offset. And then what is this? This is a big struct. The header, headers in T. Yeah, I see some um, browser stuff browser names like Conqueror, Chrome, Safari, Gecko, Opera, Microsoft Internet Explorer, and Microsoft Internet Explorer 6. But we're also keeping track of the connection type chunked. And so I guess these are just, this is the, we're putting the headers into a struct. So you see standard headers like X forwarded for accept encoding and so on, host connection, et cetera. This is just a struct, a, a CFI version of the HTTP header. And then this are the output headers, I guess. We have headers, trailers, status, status line. So like when you make a request, you get a status back. Server, e tag, cache control, like whether how long to keep it and so on. And the request body has a temp file, I guess for in case the request gets written to disk, some uh, a chain. Uh, or rather buffers, sort of buffers for chaining or buffer stuff. I'm going to guess that the actual content is in buff, but I'm not sure. Um, off T, I guess offset type, the rest of the body, maybe the amount received. Uh, more stuff about re uh, request chains some chunked stuff. I don't know uh, whether this is keeping track of the chunks or keeping track of whether things are chunked or something along those lines. We have a handler, which is a post handler. I don't know if that's the means post request or if it's, um, I don't know if it's meaning post in the sense of after or if it's post in the sense of HTTP post. Um, whether something about needing buffering, filter, I'm not sure what filter means here, and last send and last saved. And so on and so forth. The connection has an address conf. I don't know what conf is, maybe. I don't feel like configure makes a lot of sense, but some address conf, um, a conf context. SSL server name, so on and so forth, uh, busy and busy. I guess whether the, whether the connection is busy, whatever free is, maybe that's free elements of the chain. And maybe these are like booleans for, or for SSL or proxy protocol. No, something, some, something for keeping track of SSL and proxy protocol. I'm really curious what conf is. Conf default server configuration for this address port. So it is configuration. So it's, I guess, looking up the Nginx configuration for this address and port. We have 44 seconds left. And I'm not sure what else we want to see. The, the name of the game so far is we've seen the parser. We've seen a bunch of structs that are essentially, you read the HTTP spec and you come up with corresponding structs for them, which um, on its own is probably not a hard exercise. I think that the Nginx people have put a lot of thought into speed and optimization. And so you probably couldn't write something as fast as the, the Nginx server just by reading the HTTP spec. But that's kind of a, the perspective of understanding HTTP that's more of a detail than, a, than something that we need to fundamentally understand. So our 30 minutes is up. For this, let's take a quick look at the HTTP, uh, Nginx HTTP header. I don't think we're going to see anything fundamentally changing our viewpoint of what's going on, but we'll take a quick look at it. It's not so long. We have a few if def type stuff, and we're mostly just defining um, like functions and types and stuff. Like Nginx HTTP read client request body and so on and so forth. Update location config. So there's a mixture of like um, like config stuff and also handler stuff and, and processing headers and those sorts of things. 
And we have some structs here, like a status, which has a, which HTTP, HTTP version are we? The status code count. I'm not sure what count is, but start and end and some chunk stuff. And that's Nginx, at least the amount that we will see in half an hour. That's all for me. Thank you for watching. And if you enjoy watching these videos, please tell your friends and your lovers and your friends' lovers.